Hello, hello guys, hello everyone. We have a great show today. Chris Parks is with us, and so I'll, I'll just go ahead and say hello, Chris. How's everything down in the? I mean, beyond the equator in Australia. <laughs> yeah, hi Eddie. Yeah, things are great uh, beyond the equator in the outer circle. Um, yeah, bit, bit cooler than it is up up where you are, I'm sure. But um, that's how it is when the sun moves closer to the center <laughs> that's right that's right so i'm gonna have, i'm gonna shout out here to a couple of people and first one of course dimitri dimitri he worked very hard uh uh enhancing actually restoring the iglesias map and then robert robert tozzi came along and made it even better so robert sent me this Every year on July 8th at 12 a.m. UTC, 70% of Earth can see the sun. So this is how it looks like on the Mercator projection. This is what the official uh, daylight, uh, what's it, uh, timeandate.com released. When you show, display this on the glistens, this is how it looks like on the glistens map, okay? So this is the same daylight map we project onto a flat map the same map used in the United Nations logo, okay? This is not possible in a sphere. Light from a single light source doesn't wrap around a sphere, okay? But this is possible on a level Earth with a small and local sun. So this is what uh, someone suggested that we should, ha should uh, make it July 8th, Flat Earth Day. And perhaps that's, you know, that's a good idea. So this is how it looks like if you wrap the whole thing around a ball. It doesn't really make sense. And this is the official animation from the Weather Channel. And you can see here that it really wraps about 60 to 70% of the ball earth. It's impossible. You know, the heliocentric model is doomed, okay? Uh, another shout out to Cindy Holland. She is in the house. Hello, Cindy, whenever you want to uh, be on the show, let me know. And uh, another thing that happened this week, the beginning of the week, the women's uh, Brazilian women's soccer team traveled to Sydney for the Women's World Cup there. Very strange flight route they chose from Brasilia to Tahiti and then from Tahiti to Sydney instead of flying here to Santiago and supposedly flying this route right here. But when you look at the flat earth map, it makes way more sense. And a lot of people ask me, well, we would, why didn't they stop in the US? Because the US started requiring transit visas from Brazilians and that's $160 per person. So why would, before they used to stop in LA before going to Sydney. And it's even in my book, it's the very first, uh, uh, that's actually what uh, made me realize the Earth is flat because I was at the airport seeing the Brazilian soccer team off to Australia at that time. And instead of flying, according to the body's right route right here, they flew to Los Angeles and from Los Angeles to Sydney. So why don't they stop in Los Angeles now or Hawaii? because the US started requiring transit visas and it cost $160 per person. So they chose to stop in Tahiti instead. And this is how it looks like on the flat earth. And if we were on a ball, they should have stopped here in Santiago and then flown to Sydney, but that's not they do. And the other thing is like, I believe talking and uh, listening to a mechanic, a LATAM, it's a Latin American, airline that flies from Santiago to Sydney, uh, they, he was saying that some of the aircrafts, they are different. You know, you cannot just get any 747 or 787 to fly the route. They have a specific airplanes, perhaps a couple of them, three or four, like the Air Force One, the US Air Force One, that's specially designed for those routes. They are extended range and they are specifically for those routes. You cannot just get a 787 and fly the route. So there's a lot of things going on in that route. That's why we have this thing right here. 
for a flight from New York to Shanghai, they use a 777-300 ER, range of 13,000 kilometers. But Santiago to Sydney, even though the distance is much less than uh, JFK to Shanghai, they use a, a plane with a longer range, you know, and that, of course, it is a specifically modified airplane to fly those routes. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Chris is in the house, and he's going to present us a flat earth Bible study, and we will get back to comments later. So, Chris, it's all yours. Thanks for being here, and go ahead. <clears throat> Well, thank, thanks again, Eddie, for having me. I, I've always, you know, ever since the beginning of my uh, flat Earth journey, I've I've um, always appreciated the things that you've done, and certainly some of those flight path uh, things that you shared were some of the first things that I saw when I was asking questions myself back in 2019, 2020. So, yeah, it's really important all these these um this work that's being done and um. You know, for me, the as I I really liked your Bible verse that you put in the beginning there in Second Peter three verse five that says, "For this they are willingly ignorant, but by the word of the Lord the heavens were of old, and the earth was standing out of the water and in the water." You know that verse for me, it's it's one of the few um, flat Earth verses we see in the New Testament, um, and it's so important because. Today, especially today, because people are will willfully ignorant, they've chosen to ignore the truth regarding God's creation. You know, and and not not only that true for the world that believe obviously the scientism and the ball, the spinning globe, Big Bang, we came from monkeys, dinosaurs existed, all that sort of rubbish, but. Flat Earth believers often are also willing and ignorant, but by that, by the word of the Lord, heavens will vault, and the earth was standing out of the water and in the water. There's a lot of people, a lot of flat earthers that do not accept the tr the Bible as the true faith, as the one and only true faith, and that, you know, for me is real mystery that I really I do want to touch on a little bit today. But um, as far as the documentary that that we made helio sorcery that um you know the success of has been incredible and um i, I praise god for that um incredible that in, in in a sense that for us a humble group like us to have this much you know time for me is a absolutely a shock you know i couldn't believe that it would you know god would have would have allowed that to happen but the the, the um from the reason that 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 I made that was was because I wanted to make something non-denominational, something that would was not a Bible study that would appeal, you know, people to 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 go and study the Bible themselves. Because when you make a Bible study, not everyone wants to listen to a Bible study, you know. I wanted to appeal though through that to people to trust the Bible implic implicitly as the infallible word of God. Um, because really flat earth is like a new reformation. I have the picture on the screen there um, of Martin Luther in 1517 when he ma nailed those theses. You know, those theses he nailed to that church door were biblical objections against things that Rome were doing, which was the indulgences. They were just biblical ver biblical objections against it. And what cosmology for me is is a new is a new reformation. It's 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 a it's a lot of it's it's at its core at what it should be is biblical objections to the science falsely so called. And this reformation has caused a mass defection from scientism, you know, um, and and it and the. F the flat earth movement has done really well in exposing the inconsistency of, of the globe. And by and large, I think a, a lot, a lot of the, the movement itself has steered away from what I believe is the real purpose of this revelation that God has allowed to bring to the world of, of regarding our world of the truth. You know, you, 
in in um, our documentary Helio Sorcery, I I like to sh- I had to sh- we showed that the Jesuits in the 16th century they staged uh, they 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 pulled out of their treasure trove of these pagan theories, which which where Hernicus got the heliocentric model or these writings of heathen sticks, and they used that to try and misdirect people away from the Bible. They pulled all this all this heathen philosophy out to try and take people away from the scriptures, and people didn't realize they were being led away until you know until it was too late. And so, don't you think that Rome has today? in those vaults in the Vatican. Don't you think they have more mysteries? Don't you think they oh. have a whole lot more knowledge? I'm sure of they course. have so much. They do. They do. Yeah, that's right. And they're going to use that. And cosmology is probably one of the biggest threats today, if not the biggest. Their whole paradigm could crumble, you know. So they have more more tricks up in uh, up their sleeve, you know. And I'm sure they save some for a rainy day. So we have to be careful, friends here, that we get misdirected away from what cosmology or flat earth, whatever, whatever you prefer to call it, is what it's really about. And that is, that is to uplift the, the, the scriptures. It is to um, sh- show it, to bring implicit trust in it as the, as the revealed word of God, you know, like a lot of a lot of flat earthers can tend to diminish the value of the scriptures. Say, oh, it's been altered, or you know, we can't trust it. Um, it's just been written by man, or you know, a, a stress on looking to ca- extra canonical books over the scriptures themselves. So there is sorcery, the same as what Rome was doing in the in back in the 16th century, is active in the flat earth movement. And we have to be very careful that we don't get shifted from that focus, you know, that of, of what, what this revelation is about is the, is the word of God. So um, I wanted to talk today about something that we, any Bible believer would think is very straightforward that the Lord made the heavens. That's sort of the, the keynote of this, of this Bible study. So, Psalm 96, verse 4, it says, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods. Now, all Bible believers would, would, would believe this, yes. But why? Ask yourself, why is he, is, he, is he great to be feared above all gods? David continues by saying, For all the gods of the nations are idols. They're not, they're not gods. They're actually just idols. They're inanimate objects. They're no gods. But the real, the ultimate topping it off here is, but the Lord made the heavens. You know, the gods of the nations, which they made out of their own hands, gold and silver and stone, obviously couldn't make anything because they had to be made themselves. But what, what distinguishes the true God is that he made the heavens. He made the heavens. So, you know, to to us to us before, if we believed the Bible before, but didn't know flat Earth, yeah, we might go, okay, that's interesting. But when we understand cosmology, that the Lord made the heavens, what what is he? What does it mean? Obviously, it's talking about the firmament. The firmament is the key and primary feature of the heavens. David also in the in Psalm nineteen says, "The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork." Without the firmament. There could be no expanse. There could be no uh, container for the atmosphere. There could be no sun, moon, and stars to traverse in. There could be no trees. There could be no animals and plants. The firmament is the key feature of the entire creation. So when David said, but the Lord made the heavens, he's talking about this amazing structure that God made. That really is the centerpiece of all creation, of this, of this creation that we see. And that that the Lord made that that firmament distinguishes him from all false gods. Um, you know, and as far as I know, flat earthers, most of them believe in the firmament, even the ones that don't accept the Bible as the true faith. 
We all believe in the fundament, you know, because really you can't have a, a stationary topographical plane with without a fundament. You, you end up with this pancake in space nonsense that no one <laughs> believes, you know. So all flat earthers, act they believe in a fundament, you know, uh, even the new age sort of leaning ones. I say new age. I used to be new age. So when you're new age, you don't identify as new age until you come out of it. But there is a lot of, you know, new age, what I would call new age flat earthers. But um, <clears throat> so we flat earthers, all that I know, the one I've met believes in a firmament, you know, because flat earthers are truth seekers. They, they understand the symbols that are given to us in by the enemy themselves, like in the Truman Show with the, 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 the true man who, who doesn't realize he lives under a dome, he's in a reality TV show. I'm sure most of us have been introduced to that um, predictive programming um, element there. We see it in The Simpsons. Hillary Clinton talks about the highest, hard, hardest glass ceiling. They know it. They tell us. And any truth seeker uh, picks up on this and, and realizes that this is actually evidence that the firm... In, even though that Satan, you know, through these agents are, are saying it. But, um, you know, it's true that Greek philosophers have, have mentioned affirmment. The Quran even says something about the structure of the heavens. So, you know, it's true that, that not, all, not, not all pagan cultures, you know, a lot of pagan cultures knew about the affirmment. They knew about, they knew the truth, you know, and, and we see that in these, a lot of these pictures we see that flat earths have widely shared um, that there is um, evidence that all other cultures did believe in moment in a flat topographical stationary earth um, <clears throat> as the Bible does. But one thing that maybe these, maybe these nations did, did believe in a, in a, in a stationary earth. You know, I think it's, I think it's highly likely they did, you know, you see, you see evidence for that, but, but um, <laughs> their gods did not make the heavens. They did not, their gods did not make the heavens. Look, you see in the, in the, you know, the Hindu one is a snake around there and these are idolatrous sort of things and a riding a turtle and most one, it's a tree, you know, and the Egypt's got full of idols there too, you know, so really, some of these pictures are pretty uh, ridiculous, really, you know. And 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 um, obviously, these these pagan cultures got their ideas from one source, and that was really the true the true faith, which was came through Abraham and you know the, the line of Shem, which were, were given that were chosen as the expositors of these heavenly truths. Now, all of them came from Noah. They all had a knowledge of the flood and, the, and, and what God had, had shown their forefathers. So it's not like they didn't necessarily have to get it from Abraham. They all knew it in the beginning, but they corrupted it. So that the knowledge was part of But really the, the Hebrew uh, source, the Abrahamic source, is, is the only real detailed source of knowledge of the firmament and of creation, you know. Um, Genesis 1 gives a day-by-day day creation account which no other religion or culture has you know it is the it is the um it is this the hebrews are, are the expositors of sacred truth and and it is the, the religion of the bible should be i don't i don't understand why people who come to believe in a flat earth don't acknowledge that that's a very that's a great mystery to me that they that flat earthers would reject the book that has the most detailed insight into the world as they understand it, you know, it's a strange place to be because, you know, we have, we, when you have the globe model with its, um, you know, billions of years, um, godless universe, black space came from a big bang dinosaurs running around on the earth. Now that, that model of, of, I'm not going to call it creation, but that that cosmology it offers excuses for someone to reject the Bible faith. That's why it exists. It offers it presents it it presents an excuse not to believe in God. You know, but when you understand, I saw a comment come up here by someone that 
that Banjo put up there. That it it uh, it said some someone said something like it um it uh, it shows that there's a creator, you know. And oh hey there hey there Dennis, good to see you brother. And and it's um you know it shows that there's a creator with this model. They're absolutely undeniable that there's a creator. So for a flat earther, you know, to just believe that model but not accept the creator of it is is a, is is great is a great mystery. Who made it? Who do they say made it? I'm I'm not sure. Is it, uh, that's it's strange to me. You know, um, <clears throat> because and really to me, I see that as a very difficult position to be in. God help that person because I don't know. Once they realize that the, the world is as it is with its firmament, and 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 that it's clearly something made. And they still accept their creator. You know, I'm not sure how much I can help that person. You know, to me, that demonstrates a real, like, open rebellion against the creator. You know, it's 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 a it's it's a dangerous position to be in, because, like I said, the, the globe model gives a pretense for not believing in better. The the flat Earth model gives no excuse. There's no excuses left. It's clearly something made. You know, so. And obviously the reason is that the Bible faith reproves the sinfulness of our lives and it demands a change in the life that uh, many are just not willing to take. You know, it's far greater, it demands a far greater change than to change the way you understand the world. You know, to believe the world's not flat, not a globe, and to believe it's flat, okay, that's one thing, but to change your entire life because that's what the the gospel demands, you know. She just said, if any man will come after me, let him take up his cross, follow me. So that's really at the heart of the issue, you know, to, to accept um, the Bible faith, and it's cause, which is like obviously the, the result of accepting cosmology in most cases, requires a submission to the creator that not many are willing to make, you know. And I really believe that... <laughs> That there is that there is 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 coming in this world. I mean, we're all seeing it. There's so much polarization that that is obviously being fomented by the 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 powers of darkness using Hegelian dialectic, uh, different different things we're seeing, especially in these days, as uh, you know, with that madness having on going on with gender and different things. Um, we have to be careful not to be caught up into that, but. At the same time, there is a polarization coming from God where he is he's showing who really love his truth and who, who we love deception. You know, the second Thessalonians says that um, that God's going God will send a strong delusion that they might believe a lie, that they all might be, might be damned, who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So there's, God is polar is is causing those who will receive the love of the truth to, to go with Him, and those who will, who who um will receive a strong delusion, who would believe a lie, who have pleasure in unrighteousness or sin. So that's really the the what's happening here. Biblical cosmology is is helping to bring that about. But there's a, a as 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 you accept biblical cosmology, there's another truth that I I would like to present today. That really identifies that you, that a person has that will, willingness to, sub, to submit to to God and His authority. Um, so we read here. Uh, I'm just show that because of the the Book of Moses that details the creation that, that all all flat earthers believe in, with the firmament and the waters and etc. Um, and that is the given through the Abrahamic line. So. The works of the Lord. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honourable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. So the works of the Lord, which we're talking about here, which is his firmament, his, the earth that, is, that we experience that is not flying through space, we look up into the sky, we see the blue of the heavens with the waters above, obviously giving us that color, you know. 
those works are sought out of all them that have pleasure in them. People, people who have love for the truth, they seek out the works it, with, that they experience and that is revealed in his word, you know. And, and his work is honourable and glorious, meaning not only his work in creation, but his work of redemption that we know he does for us, that any Christian will know in their lives that he has done for them, and his righteousness endures forever. So his creation is always connected to his righteousness. You read that in Psalm 19 that I saw someone comment on before. Psalm 19, first half is about creation, and the second half is about God's, God's um, redemption, his law, conversion, sanctification. So the truth about, cre- about creation and redemption are in- inseparably linked. But the last verse I, I put on the screen there, verse 4, it says he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. You know, he, doesn't, he wants us to think about the things that he has made, you know. And where did he give us the knowledge of the things he had made? He had made? Where did he really detail it? We've already spoken about it, but Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And it says in Genesis 1, 1, it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, this is a very mysterious verse in the Bible that has always intrigued me. And how I understand this is the first thing God made was a formless void. Now, there's a lot of meaning to this. This is what he made on the first day. He made a formless void. He says the earth that he made, that God created in the beginning, meaning in the beginning of this earth, on the first day of creation, that what he made was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. All the elements that made up the world that he was going to create over the subsequent six six days were all homogenized in this what you might call the true primordial soup. They were all there, in mixed up in, in this, this deep void, right? In this fluid of the deep. And on the on the subsequent days, he brought, as as the as the as they say, he brought he brought order and structure to this chaos. And that and, and what we see on the first day, he brought light. On the second day, he made the firmament that separated the waters from the waters above and below it. The third day, he made the dry land and the vegetation. Sorry, the dry land appeared. It just came up. It didn't, didn't say he made it. It just kind of appeared out of the water as it, as it drained out. As I understood of the ferment, the waters drained out and the dry land appeared. The fourth day, the luminaries were made. And the fifth day, the sea life and the birds and the sixth day, animals and man. So... <clears throat> He brought order from that cha- that chaos that he made initially, in that was used with the, that primordial soup, as I as I termed it, as they term it, but I think is probably a fitting term for Genesis one one and two. But he brought order from that from all that that chaotic uh, fluid, and he did that in six days. He did that in six days. Why, why did he? Why didn't he just do it in one day? He could have done it in one day. He did it in six days. That's the account that we have. And <clears throat> this, is the, this is where we get the first, we have a seven-day weekly cycle, and this is where it comes from. It comes from creation week, and it's never changed. It's never changed from then. Now, if he did it all in six days, why did we need a seventh day? Why? And what was made on the seventh day? Nothing, nothing tangible was made on the seventh day. Now, we, we just read Psalm 111 before how it said in that last verse, verse 4, it said, He hath made wonderful works to be remembered. And, and all Bible-believing cosmology, um, flat earthers, they remember that. You know, they remember, they like to think on that because it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's glory and it's, it's wonderful. But we read in... Read the verse beside it. That's the Young's literal, not the King James on the left, but the, on the right is the Young's literal. It says, a memorial he hath made of his wonders. So 
which I think is a very fitting translation of that verse. So what he made on the seventh day is a memorial of what he did on the other six days. On the other six days, he, he made tangible things, or maybe not tangible, light isn't really tangible, but it's something you can see. He made tangible things like the ferment, the dry land, the, you know, the, the bird life and animal life. But on the seventh, he didn't make anything that you can see or touch, but he made a memorial. And just a space of time, that was, what, that was what he made. That's why that day existed. There's no other reason for it. We might as well have six days in a week, but we don't. We have seven because God, a memorial of his creation on the, on the seventh day. And we read that about the, the, the creation of the memorial in Genesis 2. Genesis 1 talks about all of the things God made. Genesis, Genesis 2 talks about the memorial he made. And thus the heaven and earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. See, on the, he'd rested. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in, that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So he blessed it and sa sanctified it, set it apart. It's separate. It's separate as a rest day, as a memorial that he made for his creation, for his work of creation that he made in the six days. So, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and when, we, when, when we read uh, that God... God is distinguished, uh, sorry, as I said before, in the beginning, God is distinguished because he made the heavens. That's how God is distinguished from the false gods, like Baal and Ashtoreth and, and all these, uh, Dagon and all these gods they were worshipped in the, in the Old Testament. He's distinguished because none of those gods made the heavens. They actually had to be made themselves by hand chisels and, and, and things. But the Lord, the Lord made the heavens. He, he, he is distinguished by the fact that he actually made the, Everything, even the, you know, even the people that make their idols, he made, he made them. But his people distinguished. We, we read in Exodus 31, the Lord spake to Moses saying, Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that will sanctify you. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the, uh, and, and the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So notice that the, the, the seventh day memorial is, is, is a sign because, because God made, is a sign that you are his people, that you actually, you acknowledge him as the creator of those things made on the six days, that you memorialize it by um, keeping that Sabbath, by that memorial, you know, um, so he's got the, the, God's distinguishment is he, he made the heavens. His people's distinguishment is that they recognize that he made heaven by keeping that memorial of, that he made for the creation of the heavens. Now, the Pope made his own cosmology. Well, I, I guess he really borrowed it from paganism. As, I, as this Encyclopedia Britannica quote says from 1985, which doesn't very hard to find, I've actually held a hard copy of this encyclopedia and found this written in there, so it is true. As lectures of the principal, principles of the heliocentric theory were given in Rome in 1533 before Pope Clement VII, who approved and a formal request to publish was made to Copernicus in 1536. The Pope formally the pope and his cardinals formally um requested that copernicus publish the heliocentric theory at the beginning of the reformation so this is counter reformation theology rome doesn't request someone to publish something if it's not in their interests which in their interests is controlling everyone's minds through um false doctrines so the pope uh, the, the fact that the, that Rome actually formally requested this publish it, it is it, it was brought into the public psyche, psyche by the Order of Rome. The globe cosmology is Rome's cosmology, and it was brought in to displace uh, a faith in the Bible, which we see very very powerfully um, they have done in our day now. Now look 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 at the madness we're in now. But this is where it started. 
And not only does, does Rome have the cosmology that they have used to, to, to substitute the Bible cosmology, they have their own memorial day. Notice this. This is from a Catholic source. The Catholic world, 1894. The church took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday. This is the Catholic uh, Catholic uh, doctor saying this, the sun was a formed God with heathendom and thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Boulder, a pagan God, became the Christian Sunday. So Sunday has, just like just like Copernicus lifted the heliocentric theory from these pagans like um, Hermes Trismegistus and these different philosophers of Greeks and different people who spoke of um, sun being at the center and such. So Rome took the Sunday worship, and they made that the Christian Sunday. That was a lot. That was in um, started in in the in this fourth century um, with Constantine and different emperors. So it really um, it's all it's all from paganism. So the Pope has his own cosmology, has his own memorial, and and really um, <clears throat> both were brought to you by Rome. And so the heliocentric globe is not in the Bible. It's not in reality. It's brought to you by Rome. By accepting that, you're, you're like allowing your mind to be controlled by the power, you know, by spiritual wickedness. Um, Bible cosmology, on the other hand, is demonstrated in the Bible. It's demonstrated in reality. Um, and you're, you're, you're acknowledging the truth. You're receiving a love of truth by receiving that. Um, <clears throat> Sunday sacredness, likewise, is not in the Bible. It's not. It's it's brought to you by Rome, just like the the globe is, and it's a memorial to the Pope. But the the, the Sabbath is all throughout the Bible. Jesus even prayed that our flight was not be not a winter or on the Sabbath day. It's a memorial of the true creation. It's a way we show that we recognize God made the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. So really, it's. It's it's a it's for me this is the the memorial day and the Sabbath the uh, true creation go together, whereas the globe and 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 the Sunday they are also one. There's another there's another piece of the puzzle too. It's Rome's god, but that's probably outside of the scope of this study. They have a they have a separate god to the god of the Bible. But really, this these these two as I as I was trying to start say in the beginning. God is, is is separating in right now the world from the people who who want to who love sin they love this world or the people who love receive the love of the truth and they just want to submit to that heavenly authority and you can't you these truths and there's actually three which we'll hopefully do another documentary soon but they show the you know they show where our allegiance is where our love is and 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 if we want to serve God fully and, and appreciate all of his wonderful works, not by, only by creation, but by redemption, by, by obedience. So, yeah, that's really what I have to share today um, with everyone. And, um, yeah, I just, I just um, would like to, uh, can, I just have a, I just want to continue this, re the reformation that, that this cosmology flat earth movement really is. It's a reformation, a restoration of ancient truth, such as the Bible cosmology, and and even even things like the Sabbath, and just so many different things that God is is using to reform people's lives, and to bring them out of this darkness and into a, a true relationship with Him, and not only in this life but in the life to come. So yeah, that's really all I want to share today, and I I would like happy to um, answer any questions people might have now and. Okay, uh, I'm going to start asking a question, and you, anybody in the chat, if you have questions to Chris, uh, write it down. And but Chris, I want to know. Uh, I I've seen that in your uh, YouTube page. I think last time I checked, it was like a 234,000 views of Helio Sorcery. And I would like to know yeah. if people, not lay people, not like regular people, but like the clergy, like people like, uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, PhDs or doctors in divinity. I would like to know if those, some of those people have contacted you about 
the whole biblical cosmology, you know, N not just regular people like you and many people in the chat, but I want to know like uh, people who uh, watch it and uh, may have had like a uh, awakening, but I'm talking about like, you know, clergy or whoever, you know what I mean? I'm not just like a regular guy. So have you had this kind of uh, interaction? Well, I cannot say that I have in the sense of emails we've received that I people have identified themselves as a, um, you know, a clergyman or a, you know, a PhD or something. But um, I, I can say certainly that I've had a lot of um, Roman Catholic uh, supportive people that have, I've had dialogues with and who have um, said some maybe critical things about about the documentary like understandably but um yeah i can't really say for sure that yes i wouldn't i can't really answer that in the affirmative probably <laughs> okay um, now because i mean yeah. 200 well what two hundred fifty thousand people watch it i believe there must be somebody yeah. who's like questioning you know oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure they are. i'm sure they are i mean it's it's a pretty hard pill to swallow for um highly educated people because we um, you know that the re the purpose for that high education is is to stop you asking questions you know that's that's why they that's why they have that thorough indoctrination process um <clears throat> but yeah no i've had lots of very very positive feedback in 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 any way and and so many uh, new friends have been made and um you know, I, it's incredible. It was so hard to keep up with the correspondence in the beginning. I was just get, getting dozens of emails a day sometimes, and yeah, it was um, yeah, quite amazing. Mm. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, someone, you know, here in Japan, I interact with a lot of Japanese people, and uh, my one of my Japanese students, he was just telling me yesterday that... Uh, he's in a, uh, in Japan, they have a specific high schools for students who excel in math and physics. And he is, one, he is attending one of those uh, high schools, okay? Very uh, extremely, uh, I don't know, difficult to get in, you know, but he made it. But he's extremely frustrated because one of his teachers told him that now, from now on, they, everybody has to be average. They cannot really be, there can't be students like above average. Everybody has to be average, okay? And someone sent me a, an article yesterday. I was going to display here, but I didn't have time to print the screen. But that schools, I think in New Zealand, Australia, US, Canada, UK, they submitted to teachers the, the school curriculums for the next years. And one of the things, they will be teaching less science, less math. So they are dumbing down, dumbing down everybody, you know, like they don't want people to realize things on their own, okay? And as you were saying, like pretty much people who go higher, they get to be more indoctrinated. Now, they are going to prevent people from even realizing they are going to dumb down the people so much more from now on that you won't be able to distinguish maybe your right hand from your left hand, you know? And, right. man, that's, that's going to be terrible. I mean, we are in the last generation of knowledge who can actually access knowledge because, man, from now on, it's going to be much more difficult for people to realize this truth, you know? I mean, I don't know. Mm. That's that's my take about it. So. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's true. Those who go through the system are certainly being uh, absolutely purged of all the, that um, God-given in inquisitiveness and, and um, creativity. Because that's the design of the system. But you know what? As they do this, Eddie, they mm. force people out of the system. You know, as much as it, it's like they, they, they clamp down and it, it, it really does. Some, those who, who are going to roll over will. 
But those who um who who can who have some resistance, it actually flushes them out. Like these Deconian measures, they fl- look look what happened with COVID. When maybe I'm not allowed to say that here, but um, look what happened with you know that they the pandemic. They, yeah, yeah, that's right. They they actually so many people woke up because of that. The more harder they go, sometimes it push it flushes people out. And and these days, so many parents and they won't they would they would die before sending their children to school. I'm one of them. You know, no way I'll send them to a any any public or private school because look look what they're doing to them. You know, so th- there's there's a, at the same time the generation of youth, I believe, that will grow up. I don't know how long this world's got left, but they'll grow up with a very independent mindset. Because their parents have been pushed out and they've, they've, they've taught them at home and they've taught them from the Bible. And so, you know, like I said, I'm talking about that, that um, polarization that's happening in the world. Like as much as, as much as there's people becoming more and more wicked, there's people who, who are raising their children righteously for God, who are, who are teaching them to be um, open-minded, to be creative, to be, you know, um, self-motivated, unlike the people in the world that are just just giving their brains up and putting them through the, you know, processor of, of mainstream education, you know? So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, there's a divergence of the ways, you know, and God is using it for his, for his purposes, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I just want to reply to John. Hey, John, I'm not Japanese. I'm married to a Japanese lady and we live in Japan. Uh, it, it, my my family is like we have three nationalities. I'm Brazilian, my wife Japanese, and both of our daughters were born in the U.S., so they both they hold American passports. And we came to Japan in 2013. So that I'm just replying to this, uh, you know, comment here. And now, uh, interesting, you're saying like even this student, this Japanese student, he's telling me, he was telling me how frustrated his teacher feels because his teacher feels like he can't teach full potential anymore. They put a cap, you know, like you got to keep those students average. You cannot make them, I'm talking about Japan who just a couple of years ago, was the most advanced in technology country in the world, okay? So mm-hmm. they are making, you know, this whole nation to just be an average nation. And I understand, you know, Japan cannot act on their own anymore. Uh, so I was just watching a video, this guy from Ireland and the EU, you know, the European Union is going to be fining Ireland 20,000 euros per immigrant that Ireland rejects, you know? It's like they're forcing Ireland to take all those, you know, uh, people from the yeah. Middle East or whatever. It's just like they're forcing mm-hmm. nations, you know? So pretty much you yeah. cannot go against the system. And Japan is in this situation, you know? They cannot go mm-hmm. against the system because, uh, I mean, it's just too powerful, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're not allowed to if they want to be, you know, I don't know. Otherwise, they'll end up, you know, destroying the country because they won't allow it. the 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 you know what do you call it? the deep state won't allow that. You have to allow your your people to be destroyed because that's what they want to do. They're self destructing the world, and so they can bring in the order out of chaos once they cause chaos through all these mass migrations and different things. Um, they want to bring bring the order, which will be the final stage of, you know, the, the whole new world order. So, yeah, no, that's certainly true. <clears throat> uh, and also I agree 100% with you. Rome is behind it. I was also watching this guy saying, you know, Rome was ruling Europe 200 years before Christ and he's still ruling Europe today, you know. Even though the Roman mm-hmm. Empire ain't it, it actually expanded, you know. It reached Asia and you know through the catholic church and the, and through the jesuits so, so they pretty much rule the world today and of course they are behind all that stuff so the top, you know top notch bible study i agree with you 100% right so let me see if there is any question here for chris 
So mm. let me track here. Mm. Sometimes the people start talking about some other stuff here. Let me see, uh, yep. Japan. Check this one out here. I posted the recent video of the 99% of the population of Earth in a Japan weather news chat available for one. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I born in France, the same thing is going on there. Uh, they just uh, forcing, I mean, I, it's uh, amazing because uh, I don't know if you were, uh, if you watch my last, my, my last stream that was talking about Danny Faulkner, which I believe is a Jesuit trained guy. And uh, in, in the US alone, they have 50 million Southern Baptists. And why aren't they turning around the situation, what's going on in the US? Because the leaders are compromised. All the leaders are compromised, you know? The Bible, the seminars, the college, Bible colleges, they are all compromised, you know, with Rome. And uh, mm. it, it's impossible, man. I mean, it's it's sad. Yeah, that's right. No, there's no turning around. You know, there's no there's no turning around any any of this. Um, you know, uh, and it's it's just. It's. I think it's it's an illusion to think that the new world order can be defeated or overthrown, because the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that that this world is going to continue to get worse and worse until the end, and then and then in, in fact they're they're going to enforce the mark of the beast. They're going to kill people who won't receive it, and then um and then after that, the people that receive the mark of the beast are going. to, be plagued and then they're going to be destroyed by the second coming of Christ and there'll be a small remnant of people left alive who the Lord will, um, you know, take with him, but the rest will be resurrected from the grave. So it's, it's an illusion to think that anything can stop the new world order because the Bible does not teach that. You know, the Bible teaches that we, that we are to, um, you know, work on our on because Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Then my servants fight. You know, Peter tried to cut off the, the ear of the, the high priest servant to try and save Jesus so Jesus could defeat the enemy and maybe set up an earthly kingdom. That's what G that's what Peter was hoping at that time. You know, and so there's Jesus, but Jesus later on said that my kingdom is not, not of this world. There's no there's no solution as far as this world. The only solution is is the Lord returning. In the clouds, which will be the which we will be the ultimate victory, and the total def of the new world order. But it won't happen, you know, in, until the very end. That we have to, we have to get through that, you know. And that's why the strong delusion that's coming. That's why we have to. People have to be aware of these truths that the Bible teaches, like cosmology. That's one of the truths that the Bible teaches that will spare you from the strong delusion, you know. Um, but yeah, so for me, there that's where I part ways with a lot of um truthers who th they, th they actually think that it can be defeated when it, it cannot, you know. Well, <clears throat> I also agree with you this whole new age stuff. And uh, several times before, mm -hmm. I taught you like when you don't have a, a, a base, uh, like a, a rock where you can stand on. You get to be thrown away, taking every any other sort of teachings and doctrines, and that's the problem with people who reject the Bible but they still believe or preach flat Earth, because you are led away with all sorts of interpretations, and the Bible. I mean, it's just there to guide us. You know, that's why I have I like this banner here. Let me display here again. I was displaying at the beginning. Thai word is, uh, you know, let me hide this comment here. So Thai word is lamp to my feet and light into my path. I mean, the Bible is there just to to help us, you know, to to get through this this road which is dominated by Satan. And the Bible has a lot of things that help us to. Defeat, not not really defeat, like in a sense that we're gonna take over, and but at least resist evil 
and resist the new world order. And of course, you know, some of us will have to, will go all the way through the tribulation, and you know. But the Bible is there as a tool, just like uh, the the Bible says. It's uh, you know, it's a sword. It's also a shield. You know, uh, it's the full mm -hmm. armor of God. You know, that's where you find in the Bible. You know, in the Bible, you can uh, you are stronger to resist. So not not only to those. Uh, new age form of interpretation flat earth but to go against you know the heal the whole heliocentric heliocentric model you know that's my view mm -hmm. please yeah, yeah no, no, i'm not no, like a bible right. hmm. yeah no you're dead right there brother and and like the you know the the sword of the spirit it's a spiritual sword it's a and it's a you know the shield of faith is a, a spiritual shield you know, these are these are our weapons that are not carnal, as the Bible says, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. You know, and and um, these strongholds really are spiritual strongholds, holds over the mind that false teachers have, because you know they can kill the body, but they can't. You know, they can't kill the soul. God, Jesus says that, fear not them that kill the body, but fear him that can destroy the body and soul in hell. So the spiritual strongholds that 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 over people's minds such as the these belief systems like globe cosmology and and um false religions these are the strongholds that it pulls down and also the the the, the enslaving sins that that men have and it's through the sword of the spirit that we do this and the fact that we overcome these things you know not through a physical warfare the enemy actually wants you to do a physical warfare they want you to fight physically against satan's kingdom and the reason is because when you do that, they that actually gives them the excuse to clamp down harder upon you. You know, you, you saw that recently in in France when they they were you know we saw these I saw people walking around the streets with AK forty sevens firing off in the air and shooting police, um, robbing robbing stealing cars, different things, just just burning police stations. And look, look what's happening now. They're, um, they're, they're, they're just force arresting anyone who in the very slightest way that says anything that sounds aggressive to the police or, or resists in any way. So what happens is when you resist, they, come, they, want, you to, they want you to rebel because then they'll come and clamp down on you really hard afterwards. So they'll, they'll give it as the excuse for them to enforce their draconian measures. That's actually what they wanted. It's problem, reaction, solution. It's Hegelian dialectic. They get the people to rebel so they can come in and, and, and clamp down on it. Um, and that's what's going to happen. So they actually want rebellion. They want rebellion because when, when people rebel, they can push back and then, and then give you even tighter restrictions than you had before. If you don't rebel, they couldn't, if people didn't rebel, they couldn't really, um, you know, have their, their powers wouldn't be enlarged. That doesn't mean we go out and get the jab or, or do any of these things. No, those things aren't rebellion. They're, that's just non-compliance. You know, I'm not going to comply with something that's against my conscience. But to rebel is actually to challenge the authority of the of the rulers, which is what they want you to do. They want you to get violent. They want you to become abusive because when you do that, that enlarges their powers. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you guys watching us, you know, we all be gotta be careful. We now we cannot just fight with weapons. You know, we gotta fight with prayers too. You know, I mean, I don't know. Mm. Uh, here in Japan, we are not allowed to have weapons anyway, and neither in Brazil. <laughs> you know, but you know, sometimes we feel like getting, you know, violent. You know, against the system. Mm. I'm not gonna deny that, but. Uh, mm. I don't know. That's what they want. That you know, you just said that. That's what they want. They want to provoke us, you know. Mm -hmm. and, right. and of course, they are much more powerful. Mm. Yeah, and that's why I believe this is called the mark of Cain. Do you know when God said to Cain, He said, "When when Cain said, oh, everyone that sees me will kill me,' and God said to him, um, 'I'm anyone that kills Cain, sevenfold vengeance shall be.'" Um, uh, something like sevenfold vengeance shall be taken upon him. So Cain was protected by God, by God saying, "If you if anyone kills Cain, you'll be sevenfold vengeance will come upon Cain." 
for that action. And now I believe that wasn't necessarily for mercy to Cain, but that was because Cain used to become the ruler of evil. If anyone's read Tupper Saucy's book, Calls of Evil, it's a very good book, but there are rulers of evil in this world. It's like God needed someone like Cain to keep in check the other wicked people that were going to exist in the world. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a system where someone who is corrupt, a big bully, looks after the other bullies. But And when it, when it says sevenfold vengeance shall be taken upon him that kills Cain, that I understand to be the reason why we don't rebel against the governments. Because the governments understand they actually bear the mark of Cain. They are the Cains of, of the modern day. By rebelling against them, you actually give them the the right to execute seven ex, to exercise sevenfold vengeance upon yourself because they actually they actually rule by they rule over evil in in some ways by uh, by permission you know and they know the laws they know the rule if you rebel they're allowed to come down on you seven times harder than you came upon them so anyway it's a pretty, pretty deep principle but. I have a study on that on, on Earth Investor's website called The Mark of Cain, and it's a very important principle to understand, I believe, for these last days. Okay. Now, Chris, <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, everyone, people, uh, guys, I'm going to be uh, pin, or I'm going to add to the description of this video. Chris has a newsletter, inc including this this, uh, some of the topics we talked today, Chris, was in the last uh, newsletter, right? Uh, about, yes, uh, it was. Yeah, some, it was. Yeah. some of the verses yeah, I shared today. So I'm going to, guys, I'm going to link uh, Chris' uh, YouTube channel to the top or to the description. Also, I'm going to add his, uh, the, the email so you can sign up for the newsletter every week, every week on Fridays. Uh, he, they release a newsletter with Bible study. So th some of these that uh, uh, Chris spoke about today was in the last week and uh, last Friday's uh, newsletter. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, just placing all those links for everybody to see. And I want you to please subscribe to Chris' channels. Chris, your your uh, uh, Earth Investors gain a lot of subscribers. Huh? It's about ten thousand now right yeah that's right yeah from helios sorcery we gained like more than double of what we had before it's um you know like i said uh, it's it's amazing i'm i'm shocked um and the most amazing thing i don't know if i said this to you before but the, the youtube algorithms didn't seem to de to um, they actually promoted it for us they didn't detect it i think it's because i didn't say flat earth very much i think i said it once once maybe you know, I didn't say it and I, I probably didn't say enough words for the algorithm to detect it. And it just, they promoted it like crazy. <laughs> it was, that's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. And that's when we got like non, non, you know, so many different demographics um, of people uh, listening to it. I think YouTube thought it was like about the occult because we've got a whole lot of witches and occult people commenting like on the video like said they were kind of like you know against what we were saying but yeah like i think it actually thought it was like pro witchcraft or something you know so yeah we seem to dodge that one so i think that's why we got all the views but you know god be praised for that amen all right guys yeah. we are getting close to close the show today i want to thank chris one more time for being here it's always a pleasure and an honor for me to have you here. And I want you, Chris, to go ahead and, you know, address the, the, the guests or the viewers, uh, you know, and, and then I'll close the show. Okay. Uh, address, address, you mean like just have like some... Like some goodbye, goodbye for them. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah, like I, I, I wasn't able to see the comments, unfortunately, because I've got this, I've got different screen up, but I... I really appreciate um, you having me on here, brother, and I, I, I love the the opportunity that I've been given here. And um, you know, I just I would, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, I'll, as as um, Eddie said there, 
my email will be there, our website. You can contact me through the website even, but I would love to hear from you and it will be me writing to you and I would love to um, answer any questions you might have. And, you know, we, we, have, a, we have a book on our website too, a um, cosmology book that, that um, is available for free on a PDF. Um, so, yeah, if you want any resources and help, please feel free to get in touch. And, um, yeah, again, Eddie, I really, I really appreciate you having me on. It was a, a real honor. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to close. Chris, I'm going to go ahead and remove you from the stream, okay? Thank you so much again. We will be in touch, brother. God bless you and, and your family in beyond the equator in Australia, okay? <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. Okay, brother. All right. Okay. So, guys, I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to close with the favorite song that I normally uh, play. I'm going to play... Uh, uh, David J. Carroll. I uh, appreciate you guys for being here today. It was a pleasure. And thanks, everyone. And God bless each and every one of you, all your family. And we'll see you again next time. We're going to be talking about Tartaria with guest um, Matthew Hakim from Southern California. So let's go ahead and enjoy David J. Carroll. Thanks again, guys. God bless you. August Picard, 1931, first to reach for the stars, was the first to explore the air of view stratospherius, a scientist curious to see what was there. An aluminium black ball on a helium balloon, with photos and instruments, sail towards the moon, closing just half an hour, 52. But then drops in heat and cold But this proven gravity Wonderful, mystical, beautiful sight Black line separation of black from blue light A world run by deceivers False make believers Hiding in shadows Stealing our light Wonderful, mystical, glorious of light Wonderful, magical, awesome Yes, stealing our light
explorers and physicists, Kipfer and Picard. Yeah.